I would say that's not a great relationship to be in and I think you deserve to feel prioritized. So you can do better, move on, you deserve better. Nobody deserves that, don't stick around for that. Hey guys, this is Dove Cameron and I'm here today with Seventeen to answer some of your dating questions. First question is help, I totally embarrassed myself in front of my crush. How do I recover? I mean, in the moment, there's nothing really to do about it, right? <laughs> like, in the moment, you just gotta kinda keep rolling. But I do think that if you take yourself really seriously, the moment can sometimes be much more awkward for everybody. Whereas if you laugh, and you say like, well, that was embarrassing, or you're honest about it, you know, everybody can relate to that. I'm sure whoever your crush is, has embarrassed themselves in front of their crush. And the one thing that I think we forget as human beings is that we're all pretty much the same on the inside. And so the more you can laugh about it and the more you can be honest with him or her or the room or the situation or them and say, wow, that was so embarrassing or turn it into something funny, uh, the more attractive and approachable and relatable you'll be. Also, just for yourself, like, it doesn't actually matter. Like it does not matter what people think and your crush, if they're the right person for you, is gonna find it charming and endearing and see you like right past it. Like it'll, it, it could always end up making you more attractive because people like other people, you know, they don't like perfect people. That's my advice. I have liked the same guy since the sixth grade. We're juniors now, nothing's ever happened between us. Should I give up or make a move? So in a scenario like this, why does my hand look massive? <laughs> so. In a scenario like this, I always love to give myself a couple of paths, right? Like I imagine what my life's gonna look like depending on how I treat the scenario. One, let's assume that you never do anything about it. You never say anything, you never let that person know how you feel, and you think about who you could have been to each other, you know, all these things that our brains will concoct. Like may maybe you'll forever wonder if that person was the one, and you'll regret it. I, 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 I personally think you're gonna regret it because Nothing ventured, nothing gained. And maybe you end up with somebody and then maybe in the back of your head, you're still just thinking about that one person. That'd be awful, right? So that's one path. Path two, you go for it. It goes down in flames. It's the worst thing ever. Your feelings are hurt. He doesn't feel the same way. And you're embarrassed and all this stuff, blah, 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 blah. All the things that we can concoct in our head. The worst case scenario, okay? High school's almost over. You're a junior. It's almost over, right? Like how long do you even have to see that person for? And also, by the way, you can survive it. I know it feels like you won't survive it, but one of my favorite quotes is, the world has ended for me many times and began again in the morning. Even something as difficult as not having those feelings reciprocated from somebody that you've clearly liked for so long, you'll survive it, I promise. And you'll even look back and you'll be glad that in either case that you went for it. You know, you won't regret having not done anything. Third option, you go for it. He feels the same way, you're dating, you get an amazing last, year together in high school, maybe you even stay together through college, maybe he's your soulmate, maybe you just have an amazing year with him, maybe whatever, maybe you get exactly what you want, maybe you realize he's not the one, right? But you'll never know until you go for it. And I really, really sincerely am always in the camp of thinking that you will regret what you never investigate. And I think it's worth it. I think the fallout is always worth the risk. My friends do not like my boyfriend. He's so sweet when we're alone, but he gets nervous around them and they think he's weird. How do I show them the nice guy that he really is? <sighs> That's actually, I think, a pretty common one. I think especially if you have a very tight-knit group, bringing a significant other into that tight-knit group can sometimes be very intimidating for your partner. Think about it. There's a relationship that's been around for years that precedes him and also is, is deeper probably than your connection with him so far. It's hard, I think it's a weird thing where sometimes your friends can feel jealous of that newfound connection that you have with somebody who's not them. And I also think that, you know, the new person in your life can feel intimidated by something that they don't yet have with you. I am a big fan of communication. I think communication is the number one thing. And, and this is the one thing that I think people get confused about communication. That doesn't just mean spilling your brain and just like, spilling all over somebody and saying however you feel all the time. It's careful communication. It's what we do when we're in a respectful relationship, when we want to respect ourselves and say our truth and what we feel, but we also don't wanna hurt the other person and we wanna be cognizant and conscious of the mood and the state of the relationship. So I think if you go to your boyfriend and you say, hey, I really, really want this to work between you and me and also you and my friends, and my friends are really important to me, I know it can be really hard when you come into you know, an established group like this, but I really think you guys are gonna get along. 
you have me in common. <laughs> I like you guys, so clearly there's there's a level of relation there. And I think the more you can let your walls down, my friends are really good people, I chose them, and they're gonna love you. And um, reiterating to your friends how important it is to you that they get to know your significant other and saying that it would really mean a lot to you and that it's something that, something that you would do for them, something that you really, really want, you know, you want that relationship to work. I think as long as you explain to your friends why it's so important and you ask for their sort of like space, like mental space to not judge him so early on. I just honestly think the more that you, the more time you allow between your friends and him, the more he will become the person he is when you're alone. But also you have to tell him that he's safe with them because that's not something he, he necessarily knows. And then you have to reiterate to your friends how important it is that they give him a chance and that they make him comfortable as well. Um, because people can feel energy. And I think that if your friends are projecting that they think he's weird, he'll feel that. So you need to create a space where he doesn't feel judged where they know how important it is for you and where everybody feels not competitive and, and where they they want to love each other as much as they love you. Maybe not as much, but similar. I have a crush on my best friend. How do I tell him? Ooh. Mm. It's completely understandable why you would have a crush on your best friend. You know, you form that bond with somebody probably over years and uh, you have so many similarities and that attraction grows from familiarity and all that stuff. I know, I know I sound like a broken record, but I think you just gotta go for it. If it's something that you really feel in your core, that is something worth expressing. And I also think that we are not really taught this growing up, but you really have to honor your feelings and, and what, how, what, how you honestly feel about something like that. You owe that to yourself as much as you owe that to the person that you are in relationship with. And a best friendship counts as a relationship, right? So I think you have to tell them, you have to be honest. You have to say, hey, his name's Jack. We're gonna call him Jack. Hey Jack, um, I know that we've been best friends for X many years. Um, you are one of my favorite people on earth. And I feel really scared to tell you this. I feel very vulnerable, but I have very strong feelings for you. And for me, they're more than friendship. I don't need you to be anything other than what you've been to me. You know, I'm not, give him space. Say, I'm not, I'm not asking you to reciprocate these feelings. I'm not asking you to take this any further with me. I'm not asking you to be my boyfriend or anything like that. Um, I just feel it is important and I deserve to say how I feel. And I'm so sorry if this negatively affects you or our relationship in any way. But I, I think that I, I owe it to myself to tell you this. How do you feel? And I think that's kind of your best course of action. I think that he will respect you for telling him. And I think even if there's negative fallout, he's your best friend. He clearly knows you really well. So he'll be happy that you told him. And maybe you, if he doesn't feel the same, maybe you guys can get around it. Maybe you can continue to be friends and, and maybe through telling him, you'll be kind of like freed from those feelings. Or maybe he likes you back. And then you'll be so, so happy that you told him. Either way, you owe it to yourself to tell him. My boyfriend and I had just started dating right before the beginning of social distancing. How do we continue to stay close while being so far apart? Okay, the great news about today's day and age is that we have so much technology to keep us together. Depending on how old you are, depending on what phone, computer, whatever you have, um, FaceTime or Skype or Zoom or, or anything like that is a great tool. I think voice notes are more personal than text. I would, I'm a big fan of a voice note throughout the day. When my boyfriend and I were long distance, I would always keep him close by sending him lots of videos and photos of what I was doing. He always knew what I was doing that day. So like if I was like, I'm gonna go do a photo shoot, I would send him lots of like pictures of the photo shoot, selfies of my makeup, voice notes, telling him like, okay, I'm eating lunch now. Like it sounds over the top, but it, kind of, it helps to make people feel like they're there with you. And you can ask him to do the same. Also, I think something that's really cute that I've seen that people are doing is you can make like a little care package, put like a bunch of his or her favorite things into a box and send them to wherever they live. Like hopefully they don't live too far away. Little things like that to let them know that you're thinking of them, make them mix CDs. Like there's so many things that we can do long distance. So yeah, just get creative and let them know that they are number one on your mind. And you can be like, hey, when we're out, you know, I really want to do this or I really want to take you to this place that's really important to me. It can be romantic to think about the future when you get out, make plans. It can, it can, it can make it feel like it's going by faster. I told my best friend I had a crush on a guy and she kissed him, what do I do? 
That's a really bad best friend. If that were me, I would have to reconsider my friendship with that person because I think that you were being open and honest and intimate with your friend by telling them something and trusting them with that. And then for them to go behind your back and kiss that person is insane to me. <laughs> like, I don't even know how, that's horrible. I don't think that that's somebody who really has your best interest at heart. That's just not a friend. Ask yourself if you would ever do that to that person. And then if the answer is no, then you're not in the same relationship that they are in and you deserve better. And also you deserve better than the guy who, who kissed your best friend. You can do better, move on, you deserve better. Nobody deserves that, don't stick around for that. I feel like I have a crush on every guy I meet, is this normal? How do I figure out who I actually like and what to do about it when that happens? Okay, I think it depends on your age. I think when I was younger, like even just like a couple years ago, I felt like I had a crush on every guy I met. I remember feeling like I would go to Starbucks and I'd fall in love with a barista. I'd be like, wow, that's my, that's my one true love. <laughs> and then I'd, I'd leave and, um, and you know, be on to the next crush. I think that it's, that's just kind of like being young and being a human being. It's kind of a nice place to be. It's kind of like the world is romantic, right? It's, it's like a love story on every corner. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Don't second guess yourself. And I feel like how you know when you actually like someone and when it's the right person is, my mom always used to tell me, when you get home and you can't stop thinking about that person and it's the same person, you know, and it, they're on your mind and when you go to sleep, when you wake up, like that kind of thing, you know, like that classic thing, then that's someone that you actually like. And hopefully that's someone who likes you back because then that could be the start of a relationship. And then I think you get really clear on what you actually are attracted to in a person, what you want, the qualities that you are attracted to. And may maybe you're just like looking for that kind of energy. Maybe you just want a relationship. And in that, in that case, I don't think it's wrong to pursue one as long as you think you're in a position to not hurt that person by, you know, being attracted to every stranger everywhere. Um, I don't think that that's bad. I think that that's kind of the mark of a romantic and you just need to pay attention to how you feel. I think you'll know. I know that's so stupid to say that. And I think that that is something that it's like a widely known platitude, but like when you know, you know, there was a big difference between the barista at Starbucks and my boyfriend. And maybe you haven't met somebody yet who makes you feel like that, but you will. My boyfriend keeps flirting with other girls. He says he's just having fun, but I hate it. How do I get him to stop? I've been here before. It's awful. I don't consider myself a very jealous person, but I have become a very jealous person in a relationship where somebody was constantly making me feel like I wasn't good enough. I was always comparing myself to these other girls because the person who I was with was just so, um, demeaning, easily distracted. I mean, like we can say it in a nice way or we can say it in a mean way, but first and foremost, it sucks. It's not okay. It's not fair. And in whatever way he wants to frame it, it doesn't matter because it makes you uncomfortable. You need to put yourself first. You need to say, why is this person comfortable treating me like this? I wouldn't do this to them. And if you talk to him and he refuses to do anything about it because he just says that's how I am, that's who I am, and you say, okay, well, I can't work with that. I think that's a relationship you shouldn't be in. And a relationship is comprised of two people. So if you tell your significant other, hey, that really hurts me, and from the sounds of your submission, it really hurts you. Anything that really hurts you that your significant other refuses to change, and it's not something like fundamental about them, you know what I mean? Like you're not like, hey, leave your family and come live with me. Do you know what I mean? Like it's not an unreasonable thing that you're asking. It's a behavior shift. And it's something that would make you feel more comfortable and also probably more secure. And in a relationship, it's really important to feel secure. It's really important to feel comfortable. Also, I think it's really important to feel like the only person that your significant other is interested in. I think that that creates a bond. I think it creates romance. I think that's just like expected. And again, someone who won't change a small behavior to make you feel more comfortable is not someone who's prioritizing you. And I think you deserve to feel prioritized. So. I would say that's not a great relationship to be in unless they want to change. My best friend broke up with her boyfriend a few weeks ago. He asked me out and I want to say yes. Is it okay to go out with a friend's ex? And if so, how long do I have to wait? Okay, this is a hard one. There are so many variables in this situation. It comes down to the specifics. So first of all, with what you just told me, she broke up with him. That's important. So you have to, first and foremost, go to her. If she's an important friend to you, I mean, if she's a friend at all, you have to go to her. 
and say, hey, with whatever you wanna tell me, why did you break up with him? Are you not interested in him anymore? How long have you not been interested anymore? Do you not have feelings for him anymore? You have to really get the lay of the land and know the situation. Because if she is in the throes of it and if she's really sad and if something happened, your first priority as a friend, in my opinion, is to be her friend. If I were in this situation, my first instinct would be to be like, are you okay? And if she was like, no, then the boy would be off the table for me. If she says, yes, I am okay. No, I don't have feelings anymore. Then you can kind of gently broach the question, can I go out with him? But if you think that her knowing that he asked you out is gonna hurt her, Again, I think that that's something you should keep to yourself. I think that you should be a friend first and foremost. And then if you ask her and she says, yes, I would say still give that time because no matter how moved on somebody is from, from being with somebody else, there's still that lingering energy. There, there might still be invisible feelings. She might just be saying that so that you will date him and you won't feel bad. But, but honestly, if it were me, she doesn't have feelings. She says it's okay to date him. I would still probably give it like, depending on how long they were together. Like if they were together for like two years, I mean, I would give that like six months, if not like more, if not maybe like never date him, you know? Like if it was serious, I might be like, mm, no. Cause that's just, that sticks with you, you know, something like that. But if they dated for like a couple months, a couple weeks, I don't know, maybe give it like a month, two months. You have to kind of feel it out and definitely, definitely be a friend first. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for letting me answer all your questions. My new single, Remember Me, is out everywhere. Link is in my Instagram bio, at Dove Cameron. Thank you so much for all your support and for more videos like this. Don't forget to subscribe to Seventeen's YouTube channel.